This video is brought to you by Brilliant. Working from home has become the new status quo in the last two years. With that, millions of people have had no choice but to reconstruct their homes into offices, creating various types of workspaces. In this video, we will talk about how to effectively set up and revamp your workspace so that you feel inspired, productive, and rested as much as possible. Now, I will not be referring to specific products, but I'll make sure to put a list of decent product recommendations in the description below. In most cases, when we talk about home workspace, we usually discuss desk setups. If you're lucky to have a dedicated room, office, or studio, that's even better. The principles are pretty much the same. So let's start with the position of your desk. As outdoor creatures, we feel happier and more inspired when we are outside. Taking that into consideration, a good practice is to try and position your desk near a good natural light source. Sunlight, outside life and greenery helps boost serotonin, boosting morale and creativity. Always face the lights and don't let the light hit you from behind since this will result in reflections, reduce monitor visibility, you know, eye strain and poor posture as a result. If possible, try not to glue your workstation to a wall unless you have a nice window in front or above. Now, I've done this more than once and it's always made me feel more closed up and miserable. A friend of mine, Michael, who has insanely beautiful home setup and social media presence, recently rearranged his office, moving away from the wall and putting his desk in the middle of the room, giving the whole vibe more negative space and room to breathe, facing the light and windows as we just discussed. Giving your desk frontal space gives your eyes some rest too, because you won't be stuck at the same, you know, arm focal length when you have a wall in front of you, but rather glance and rest your eyes at a distance. When it comes to ergonomics, there are a few simple rules you can follow. First, the chair. Remember that the chair should be adjusted according to your mouse and keyboard and not to yourself or to your desired posture, feet length or style. The mouse and keyboard are the items that are in fixed positions, so you should accommodate your chair's height and position to them. Raise up or lower your chair to a place where your arms are close to a 90 degree position. If your feet are up in the air, use some sort of footrest. Avoid sitting too high to avoid, you know, wrist twisting and not too low to put some weight on your hands or your forearms. Don't sit straight. This might sound like something you might read in a book, but sitting completely straight is a recipe for fatigue and slouching. Instead, try and lock your chair to the first or second leaning position to give your body a good resting posture and less arch on your neck. Arching your neck leads to headaches and it is the same reason to avoid recliner style of sitting. If you have non-adjustable chair armrests that don't fit the ergonomic practices, try and remove your armrests. Removing them might turn out to be the more comfortable sitting position too. A chair with suitable headrest is better than one with bad armrests. Let's talk about the monitor. Get at least a 27 inch or preferably a 32 inch monitor. Anything below 27 inches will give your eyes unnecessary strain. And while on the topic of that, try to use a 4K monitor with a proper scaling setup. It's 2021. Remember your smartphone most likely has a better screen than your monitor. So why cut corners on something that you look at over 150 hours a month? I'll be covering the best work from home monitor choices and setup next week. So subscribe and hit the bell icon if you're interested. Raise up your monitor so that your eyesight is horizontal to the top portion of the monitor. If you can't raise your display enough, use books or something else to lift it up. A monitor arm will be a great alternative too since it will free up even more space on your tabletop. If you think you need two monitors, consider a curved ultra wide for that purpose. Dual monitor setups are hard to focus on and serve the same purpose. Still, they are more significant investment with the expense of having, you know, ugly bezels in the middle. Your peripherals mouse and keyboard should be exactly where your hands naturally rest on the desk. In many cases, you might find compact keyboards to be more comfortable unless you deal with a lot of numbers. The idea is not to push your mouse too far to the right or to the left if you are a lefty. Someone once said that you shouldn't have to reach with your hands to grab your tools. Let's talk about isolation. Clearing the noise is what makes you a productivity machine. If you can't afford to work from a separate room at home, create your workspace and desk setup as a purposeful corner or segment of your shared space. It should be something that is distinguished from 
the rest of the home and is used just for work purposes. If necessary, consider a folding layout where you put everything away at the end of the day. The actual desk should be around 30% larger than your monitor. That's my personal observation. Of course, suppose you work with many documents and papers. If that's the case, you might prefer to have a more oversized tabletop to have space to you know, spread everything around. Choose size based on monitor and type of work. Also, choose a tabletop that will fit your taste since this will be something that you'll be looking at for hours. You might think this is not essential, but inspiration comes from your surroundings and you wouldn't want to be surrounded by an ugly tarpaulin or a messed up tabletop. Mechanical keyboards are hot right now, but they usually require a palm rest. If you need a good keyboard, but you don't really care about the type, a good choice would be to go for a low profile keyboard to avoid fatigue and pressure on your wrists. Your pointing device could be a mouse or trackpad or both like me. Choose your pointing device based on your workflow and if necessary, go for a mouse palm rest. Unless you're really into precision peripherals, go for wireless options with built-in batteries that can be charged with USB-C. You wouldn't want to have to deal with charging batteries, it's annoying. The second priority to the workspace after the monitor is the headphones. But before we get to that, remember to take a break while you work. Work in segments of like 15 minutes, choose a priority task, set a timer and start working on that task and only that task until the timer goes off. While you do that, no distraction, no social media, no answering the phone. Stop working and take a break when you hear the timer. If you don't feel like getting some fresh air and you want to take your mind off something and self-improve, you can try Brilliant, which is today's video sponsor. Brilliant is a problem-solving based website and app with a hands-on approach with over 60 interactive courses from computer science to neural networks, math foundations, and much more. I'm currently taking a course on logic. Using limited information, I have to make predictions, eliminating the impossible to uncover the truth. Logic helps spot fallacies and it is the study of reasoning and argumentation, definitely a skill to improve while working from home. Brilliant exercises improve critical thinking in the means of storytelling, code writing, interactive challenges and problem solving. So if you want to start improving your critical thinking skills, click on the first link in the description below or go to brilliant.org forward slash gcz and sign up for free. And by the way, the first 200 people to upgrade with this link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video. So, headphones. If you plan to work from a shared space, the headphones are your way of spacing out and focusing. They are very important. When you choose your headphones, think of the following. They should be on-ear and over-ear headphones. You'll be using them for hours, so they need to be able to have a good seal and most of all, fit comfortably on your head. There shouldn't be any ear pressure or discomfort on the top of your head either. Buds are not a healthy choice having them stuck in your ears for hours. So go for a noise cancelling option, especially if you have kids or share the room with someone else. If you really want to space out, try noise cancelling in combination with white noise and I'll guarantee you, you'll forget what's going on around you. Although sound is essential, working from home most likely results in virtual meetings. All your meetings should be done via headphones because you don't want to be the one that echoes and reverbs during a meeting with 20 other people. If the budget allows it, get the headphones with the best possible microphone because sounding confident and not having to repeat yourself can take you places. Workspace speakers are optional for any setup and are good for when you have a dedicated room to work in. They're not recommended for meetings or for doing precision audio from home, but if you have a pair uh, or a system, that's great. If possible, invest in a good web camera or even a real camera setup if you'll be working from home for the foreseeable future. With that, try and get a decent separate microphone that can really make you sound good. Both the camera and the mic are your window to your colleagues and your career and your business development. So looking and sounding as good as possible is not something to take lightly. So to make everything look like a catalog and basically turn your workspace into an inspirational place, you have to organize and cable manage. Run everything to the back of the desk and maybe get some railways and other cable organizers that you can use. Adhesive Velcro tape is your best friend and you can use that to mount all your power adapters and outlets behind or on the bottom of the tabletop. Be sure to keep everything as flat as possible and push further back as possible since you don't want to feel any knee discomfort when you sit. Remember, raise up whatever you can, like putting your monitor on, on an arm or attach things underneath to have a clean tabletop. 
nice accessories that you can place are of course plants, preferably real ones, and accessories like a wire charger or a charging hub that you can use to quickly top up your devices when necessary. A good reading light or a monitor light might also be a good idea when it gets dark and especially in the winter. If you have any questions, be sure to list them in the comment section below or ping me on Twitter and check out the product recommendations list that I have prepared. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out.